Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Pins of 8085 Microprocessor. Today we are in the part 3. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. Today, from the pin diagram of 8085 Microprocessor, we are going to learn about the pins 21 to 28 first. Thereafter we will learn about the pin 30. So let's begin. Now before we dive straight to the pins, Let's quickly revise the pins that we have learned so far. Pins 1 and 2 are used for the frequency. That is, these two pins are connected to the crystal, which is responsible for the frequency of the 8085 microprocessor, which happens to be 3 MHz. Thereafter, we have learned about the pins number 3 and 36. 36 is the reset in active low pin, using which we can reset the 8085 microprocessor. Pin number 3 is used for resetting out the peripherals which are connected to the 8085 microprocessor. Then we learned about the pins 4 and 5. 4 is used for serial output data and 5 is used for serial input data. Thereafter we have learned about the pins 6 to 11. These are the interrupt pins and among this, trap has the highest priority which is also generated by the external devices. Coming to the restart interrupts, these are generated by the software instructions. And finally, INTR, which is also generated by external devices like keyboards and mouse. However, it has the lowest priority of all. Now coming to the pin number 11. For the restart and the INTR interrupts, the 8085 microprocessor has to generate INTA, that is interrupt acknowledgement active low signal to the devices which have requested for the interrupt. Then we learned about the pins 12 to 19, that is 87, to 80. These are actually the data bus of the microprocessor. And whether they will be used for reading or writing the data, that is determined using the pins 31 and 32. Pin number 32 stands for RD bar, which is responsible for reading. Pin number 31 is actually the signal WR bar, which stands for write. Now, apart from these, we have also learned about the pins number 20 and 40. Pin number 40 is VCC that is the plus 5 volt power supply and pin number 20 is the ground. So that was the quick recap. Let's now begin with the pins for today. At first we are going to learn about the pins 21 to 28 which are named as A8 to A15. And these are these pins. Now if you notice these are unidirectional pins. Now to be really honest 8085 microprocessor has 16 bit address bus. Therefore, the pins 28 to 21, along with the pins 19 to 12, these pins comprise the address bus of the 8085 microprocessor. Now, before we get into the details of the address bus, let me explain how the memory locations are addressed. Say we have got two memory locations, location 1 and location 2. Now, since we are dealing in binary, how do you think we are going to address these two locations? Now, since we have only two locations, this can be handled with one bit. That is, we can use the bit 0 to address the location 1. And the bit 1 can be used to address the location 2. So clearly, this addressing problem can be solved using one bit place. If we place 0 in here, it will address the location 1. And if we place 1 in this place, it will address the location 2. Now say we have got 4 different locations. Now how we are going to address these 4 locations? Now this addressing problem can be solved if we use 2-bit places. Now we already know if we have got 2-bit places, what different sequences can we have? We can have the sequences 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, 0, 0 bit sequence can be used to address the location 1, 0, 1 bit sequence can be used to address the location 2, and the rest that is 1, 0 can be used for location 3, and 1, 1 can be used to address the location 4. So what we have learned so far? Using 1 bit, we can address 2 locations. Similarly, 2 bits can address 4 locations. Now, can you find any pattern in here? If we talk about the bits and think of them as exponents, 
In that case, we can have them as the location's exponents if the base is 2. Because 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. Now from these, we can deduce that using n bits, we can address 2 raised to the power n locations. Now focus on this. Since n bits can address 2 raised to the power n locations, let's now talk about the address bus of 8085 microprocessor. If you notice, we have got 28 to 21, that is these 8 pins. And we also have got the pins 19 to 12, that is these 8 pins, haven't we? So altogether, there are 16 pins. In other words, 16 bits can address 2 raised to the power 16 locations. Now what is 2 raised to the power 16? Well, 2 raised to the power 16 is 65,536. So using 16 bits, we can address 65,536 locations. Now coming to 2 raised to the power 16, we can strip it down as 2 raised to the power 6 multiplied with 2 raised to the power 10. Now 2 raised to the power 6 is 64. And coming to 2 raised to the power 10, it is 1024, which in computer jargon or in computer terms is called 1K. So 2 raised to the power 16 is 64K. So clearly, using 16 bits, the microprocessor can address 64K locations. Now what are these 16 bits? Well, these are the bits which are sent via the lines A15 to A8 and A7 to A0. Now notice, since we are talking about the address bus, this time, instead of calling them A7 to A0, we are calling them A7 to A0. So A15 to A8, via these 8 pins, we are sending 8 bits of address, which is higher order bits of the 16 bits, that is, the most significant 8 bits. And via A7 to A0, we are sending the lower order bits or the least significant 8 bits. Since we are talking about 8 bits, we can also call them higher order byte and lower order byte. Now I think you are confused with this explanation. We are using the same data bus right now as the address bus. How is this possible? Well, this is possible because via all these 8 pins, both the address and the data bus are multiplexed together. Now you might be wondering how the computer will let the peripherals know whether these pins are carrying data or the address that is the lower order byte. Well, for this, we have got the next pin that is the pin number 30 or ALE. Now, pin number 30 that is ALE is an output pin and through this, the 8085 microprocessor lets the peripherals know whether these lines will be carrying the data or the address. Now, coming to ALE, it stands for Address Latch Enable. Now, why it is named like this? We will understand this at a later point in this course when we will observe the data transfer between the microprocessor and the memory. For now, just remember, ALE stands for Address Latch Enable. Now, notice ALE is an output pin and it is basically a signal. So when ALE is 1 that is high, it will mean that these pins are carrying the lower order bits of the address bus. That is, together all these 16 pins will be treated as the address line. On the other hand, when the ALE becomes low, that is 0, it will mean that D7 to D0 is activated. In other words, these lines are now being used as the data bus. So clearly, the confusion that whether these lines are carrying the data or the lower order byte of the address is resolved with the presence of this particular output line, that is pin number 30 or ALE. So do remember, in case of 8085 microprocessor, the address bus comprises the pin 28 to 21 and the pins 19 to 12. And through pin number 30, the microprocessor tells the peripherals that whether these pins from 19 to 12 are carrying the data 
or the lower order byte of the address. So in this session, we covered the pins 21 to 28, which are specifically used to send out the higher order byte of the 16-bit address. And we also learned about the pin 30, that is the address latch enable pin, which helps the peripherals understand whether the pins from 19 to 12, that is 87 to 80, are carrying the lower order byte of the 16-bit address or they are carrying the data. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the remaining pins of the 8085 microprocessor. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.